Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. Travel Wise with the World Travel Market Trilogy. This is part two where we take a look at aviation. And in this uh, special episode of Travel Wise, I'll be talking to and finding out more about Mauritius Air, their expansion of routes from uh, the UK to the island in the heart of the Indian Ocean. We'll be finding out about the uh, re- revamping, the rebranding of Saudi Arabia's national airline, Saudi Air. And we start off with Riyadh Air, which is the new airline for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, very much in the startup phase at the moment. So let's find out where they're at and what their plans are. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. We're racing around, flying around, and I'm delighted to arrive to have landed at the Riyadh Air stand to find out more about this, would you believe it, startup airline. Vincent Costa, Chief Operating Officer, delighted to meet you again and uh, to be on your stand. So, what's your key message here at ATM, uh, WTM? Well, listen, we are super excited to be uh, here in London. For us, it's part of building a brand, building the brand of, uh, you know, the biggest startup, airline startup over the last 30 years. And what better place than, uh, you know, the pavilion of Saudi Arabia sure. to, uh, to be present and, and represent the airline. So, essentially, we are here to be part of a family the Saudi Arabia family, Saudi tourism and all the partners. Sure. And, yeah. and we are part of a, of, a, of a great adventure, which is a Vision 2030. Well, yes, indeed, indeed, 2030. I meant to start up, you meant to start up. Normally a start up, we're thinking of little, you know, two or three people starting up a business, but this is a huge operation, even at this stage, I guess, it's going to grow and grow and grow. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we are going to fly by 2030, roughly 100 destinations. So this will be, uh, from 25, our first flight till 2030, a super rapid growth. Uh, we have aircraft deliveries for this. We have built a network uh, which will be balanced between uh, east and west and, and the region. And our goal is simply to connect Riyadh to the rest of the world because Riyadh is the least connected capital of the (laughs) G20 countries. That's going to change. So you said east and west. What about north and south? Yeah, so when I say east and west, uh, it includes obviously north and south. (laughs) We didn't want to miss them out, did we? Yeah. You know, they might be sort of thinking, what's going on? But, but, but when you look at the map uh, today uh, uh, and, and the connectivity, the international connectivity of Saudi Arabia to the rest of the world, you will see that there are many gaps uh, 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 to yeah. Europe, to Asia, to Indian subcontinent, to the region, to Africa. So we want to close these gaps, and that's our purpose. So at this stage, how do you see the balance between long-haul and regional traffic for you and routes? So again, it's about closing the gap in terms of connectivity uh, between uh, Saudi Arabia and the rest of the world. So if you look, for example, at Riyadh to Asia, uh, you will see that most of the traffic today is going through Big, big hubs in the region yeah, because sure. they are simply not direct connectivity uh, 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 between Riyadh and this uh, and this country. So long haul will be a big part of the closing the gap, but but also regional connectivity or you know closer Europe or, or, or closer Indian subcontinent. So Riyadh Air will be very much a based on a hub model like those other carriers in the region. No. no, so this will be a key differentiator for us. Uh, we don't intend to be another mega connector in the region. There are great airlines to do this. We have a market of more than 35 million people. And, and again, this market is, is you know, lagging connectivity, uh, lacking connectivity with the rest of the world. So, so we will essentially focus on connecting Riyadh plus Saudi Arabia to the world. And then, you know, if we have opportunities to connect some international market to other yeah. international market, that, that will come in the second stage. And what do you see as being your main aircraft? I mean, you can have regional aircraft, long haul aircraft, of course. So we are right now uh, focusing on uh, our first deliveries, which will be Dreamliners. So we made an order of 72 Dreamliners. Uh, first ones coming in 2025 until 2030 and we will announce 
uh, in the coming months a narrow body order uh, okay. which will complement our, our wide body fleet. Okay, there's a big air show happening in a short period of time, the Dubai air show. Can we expect big announcements at that event, do you think? Well, we'll see you there. Big smile there. So, <laughs> well, you can have a second aircraft there, I believe, which will have a, its own identity in terms of livery. So we are going to announce a second livery shortly. Okay. So again, watch this space. Breaking travel news. Make sure you're uh, in tune with breaking travel news so we can cover that. And uh, okay, we've been talking about routes. What about the freight side of things? That's very key for, for airlines, especially coming out of the pandemic where freight traffic gave airlines a big, big boost. Absolutely. So, so cargo is an area we are looking very closely. Uh, part of the uh, uh, Saudi Arabia national aviation strategy is also focusing on cargo, so we want to play a role in that space. So, you know, as mentioned earlier, we'll have 72 wide bodies, so that's a lot of scar- cargo space. Yeah. Huh? These bellies are, 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 are huge, and we are also looking in the long term at the possibility to go to go bigger. But and, I cannot, yeah. you know, Is comment it? too much on this yet. Sure. Thank you very much indeed for uh, talking to us. And one thing, I mean, you're very, very excited about being with Riyadh Air. So what is the key thing for you to be involved with a startup of this magnitude? Well, the blessing we have, and I think that's why so many people from the airline industry are knocking at the door to join this adventure, is the fact that we have zero legacy in terms of, uh, you know, IT processes, uh, you know, structure, etc. So we are very excited by this opportunity to create the first truly digital native airline. That's what is motivating us because that's going to make a big change in the airline industry in terms of guest experience, in terms of the way we distribute travel products. So that's what excites all of us, starting with me. <laughs> Sounds very, very exciting indeed. News, views and interviews. Flying around the world travel market, we've landed in Saudi Arabia, you might say, and we're going to be finding out more about sort of what, rebranding and uh, the latest news from the national carriers. So, Arvid, what's your presence here? Well, first of all, very happy to be here in London at the W2M. Uh, meeting all my, my colleagues from the trade and displaying basically our, our new brand, our new brand identity that we launched just uh, four weeks ago. As you can see, very bright colors. You know, it is, it's very, bright. It is uh, <laughs> very fresh and the colors symbolize very much, you know, the, the features of the country. It is the waves, uh, blue, the palm trees, the green. And you see the, the yellowish, you know, representing the sand and, and the desert. So much to see. I mean, looking above, we've got uh, reflective uh, triangles which are moving like the waves of the sea, maybe, and down below. It's, it's like a dance floor, isn't it? A disco nightclub dance floor in changing colours. It is very, you know, it's young, uh, it's bright, but it also takes, you know, the history of Saudi into account because it has a little bit of a retro look and retro, feel yeah. too. So yeah. it's both. It's based on our history, but it's a bright future for us moving forward. Okay, indeed, a bright future. So a uh, lot to talk about regarding the future. Um, but your key messaging here, your product on display, what are you trying to convey to visitors to WTM? Yeah, I think it is basically transformation. Um, Saudi so embarked on a very strong and robust transformation process. And the rebranding is just, you know, to, to showcase it, but... There's much more to it. It is a whole digital transformation. So we launched a new app. Uh, We have a travel companion, which is based on ChatGPT4. So the people in Saudi, it's a very young population, and they're very digital affine. So for us, the digital assets are key. Uh, in, in, in really servicing you know, our, our clients. So using your app and the use of AI, what can I gain, what can I find by using the app and your travel guide? So it is all about giving control to our guests. So they have all the, the information. They can make decisions you know, with a press of a finger. They don't need to call, you don't need to wait. It's all about speed and empowerment of our guests and let them make the right decisions that they want to, to make. I'm going to check it out in a while. Yeah. Uh, please do so, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we, we see to have the right combination between people and, and face-to-face service yeah. or digital service. And uh, our guests can choose 
what they want to, you know, how they want to be served yeah. and how they want to interact with us. Now you're on a very, it's a very impressive uh, group of companies here, or stakes, stakeholders from Saudi Arabia here at World Travel Market. You're part of one big family in many ways with uh, the Red Sea Global, to mention just one. What's it mean to be part of this big transformation in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, so as you know, the country you know, has expressed the vision 2030 of change, opening and transformation. And, and we see ourselves as an enabler of this vision, kind of a wings of 2030. Our target is to bring a lot of guests into the country. And the country has opened up. It's uh, very easy now uh, to enter the country. So, you know, you get an e-visa within uh, two minutes. So it's a, it's a huge change. Yeah. And there's a huge investment in, in tourism. So you have the Red Sea, you have Neom, you know, sure. you have so many pro uh, uh, projects right now going on. And that all brings it together. You know, it's a huge transformation of the society, of the country and of tourism. Yeah, I've got to mention, going to one side of your stand here, there's this new startup airline from uh, Riyadh. What's going to be the impact of this second airline, this second national airline on Saudi Arabia? Yeah, the market is so huge at the moment and it's basically underserved. So to open up a, a second airline in Riyadh, you know, it brings Riyadh onto the map. You know, it's our capital, the capital of the kingdom. And uh, the market is big enough, you know, to, to have two airlines. And it is, you know, a very cooperative approach. So we will connect the world, you know, to Riyadh and to Jeddah. What we haven't mentioned so far is some of your products and destinations. Have you got new destinations coming on stream? And so we are serving roughly 100 destinations at the moment with 144 planes. So we have quite a broad network already, but we are, we are growing uh, significantly. I think in December we will start uh, Johannesburg and we will start Toronto in Canada. Uh, and we are also looking within the region, so in, in uh, Tehran and Erbil. So, you know, we are constantly so growing, actually, our decision. connectivity and wider affair as well. Yes. So to finish off, what does it really mean to be here at World Travel Market? Because Europe and UK is a strong market for you. So definitely, UK is a huge market for us. We operate three dailies from Riyadh, two dailies from Jeddah. We fly Birmingham, we fly Manchester. So UK is a, is a very strong source market, but also destination market. And we have, we, we are the only airline that has a huge home market. We have 27 airports in Saudi Arabia. We have 35 million people. So we are not looking for an extremely high share of uh, transfer traffic. So Saudi is going to London. It is people from the UK going to Saudi Arabia, but also going to the Indian subcontinent. Cool. So we cater to all of those traffic flows. Well, thank you very much for your time. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. Hi, I'm Alan Owen. I'm the country sales manager for Air Mauritius. And we're glad to be at World Travel Market. It's been an amazing show. We've been really, really busy with some good people coming around. Our main message is really that, you know, since pandemic, um, we've seen a massive increase in business to Mauritius. Demand has been strong. It's been continually strong from a point of view where we've in increased our schedule from three flights a week to five flights a week and now to daily. We've and gone daily, have We've you? gone wow. daily. As of last Monday... Uh, we moved from Heathrow to Gatwick to facilitate our, our, our daily operations. So really excited. We're putting over 9,000 seats a month into the UK to Mauritius market. So, and that's just purely built on the strong demand for Mauritius long haul luxury travel. And uh, which aircraft are you using to uh, convey passengers? We're using our new uh, state-of-the-art A350s and our A330neos. And our fleet age for the UK market is less than five years old. I'm going to ask you one more question about the aircraft. What's the seat configuration? Uh, for the, we've got two seat configurations. So we have business class, 28 seats on, on the both aircraft side, same. For the A330, there's 260 seats in economy. And for the 350, 298 seats in economy. So what's been the response so far with the fact you're going daily? Amazing, to be honest with you. We're, we're kind of looking at, all, obviously, our top tour operators are very happy because they can now offer the kind of the, the length of stay that they can anybody wants rather than the airline saying well we only operate five times yeah. a week so we've now got to stick to the whatever that that pattern delivers now we can do anything so daily operation makes a massive difference i'm, I'm wondering really because mauritius is perceived as being an upmarket destination a luxury destination 
and you sort of got people on a narrow body, single aisled, uh, 200 odd plus in the economy. So. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're twin old anyway, so they're kind of state-of-the-art. But when it's not. I mean, it's a bit of a myth in terms of, like, is it long-haul luxury? Yes, it is. But, you know, we've had some offers out with some of our tour operators recently where, you know, if you travel at certain times of the year, you could have stayed at a three-star plus hotel, half board for seven nights, including flights and transfers for under a £1,000. Right, OK. So, you know, is Indeed. that expensive? No, it's not for what you're getting. Yeah, Indeed. So, who have you been talking to at this event? I mean, all of our top tour operators have been here. You know, all of our big guys that we normally would speak to. Uh, they're obviously keen to kind of understand what our future plans are. You know, we've worked on obviously building up that profile that we're now Daily, we're now Gatwick. Uh, what else can we do? And we're also looking at our network. Where else does Bramrushes fly that can offer? sort of some value but we see massive sort of increases in demand for twin centers with South Africa and Mauritius and that's been a key sort of selling point for us this, this time here. Interesting so exciting times for Mauritius with the news that you've uh, just started a daily service. Isn't it? Yeah I, that's our big news to be honest with you and I think it's purely built on the strong demand from the UK market and offering the hotels and the island offering such good value for money. Okay. Great stuff well thank you very much indeed for talking to Breaking Travel News here at the World Travel Market. Always a pleasure thank you very much indeed thank you. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. Some of the key aviation players uh, at the World Travel Market in London, which was held at the beginning of November. Now, in our third and final part of the World Travel Market Travel Wise trilogy, we'll be looking at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia again, but not from an aviation perspective, but from a land based perspective, as we take a look at two of their key development projects. And that's what you can expect in the next episode of Travel Wise. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. Travel Wise. And if you'd like to have your own podcast, do drop me an email on philblizzardmedia at gmail.com. A Phil Blizzard radio production. Available on Apple, Amazon, and Garmin, Spotify, Deezer, Google, and all good podcast channels. And also now on YouTube.